What does it mean to have just right menopause hormone levels? Well, just like the dials on your car's dashboard, there's a range that you want to hit, not too high and not too low, but just right. That's what we're aiming for with estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone, the three most important hormones for women in menopause. When your menopause hormone levels fall into the suboptimal zone, you're likely to experience symptoms like hot flashes, night sweats, low libido, insomnia, mood swings. But if they're up in the side effect zone, you might run into issues like breast tenderness, vaginal bleeding, or unwanted hair growth. Moving your hormones to just right levels provides two benefits. The first is reducing or even eliminating most or all of your menopause symptoms. The second is reducing your long-term health risks at the same time. I'm Steve Goldring, the hormone pharmacist. I help hormone practitioners and patients, especially women in menopause. I do that by creating easy-to-understand patient education resources, like my digital course, The Menopause Solution. If you're wondering about the specific lab values to aim for, I'm going to be covering those in detail later in the video. Stick around until the end to get the whole picture. One way we can figure out what that optimal range should be is by comparing postmenopausal levels to those of women in their childbearing years, maybe age 18 to 40, roughly. This graph shows estradiol levels throughout a typical menstrual cycle in a healthy, regularly cycling woman. Notice how much estradiol can fluctuate. During the course of a single month, estradiol levels can go way up, as high as 600 or 700 picograms per milliliter, even higher sometimes. And they can drop way down, well below 50. It's a pretty huge range. This dotted line represents a kind of average estradiol level for a woman in her childbearing years. After menopause, you're looking for a just right estradiol level that maybe doesn't go as high as it would for younger women, at least not the top end, but it's high enough to reduce hot flashes, night sweats, irritability, and protect your long-term bone, heart, and brain health. That optimal estradiol level is somewhere around 100 picograms per milliliter, but getting to that just right level might be a little tricky for some women. Many women experience side effects like breast tenderness or even vaginal bleeding as their estradiol levels approach 100. If that's you, 60 might be adequate, a good target to aim for. In my experience, most women feel better when they're around 60, even if they can't quite hit that 100 mark. The goal is to find a level that eliminates your symptoms but avoids side effects. Some women have found success with supplements like iodine or dim diindolyl methane, which might help mitigate some of the side effects from higher estradiol. It's worth considering and also discussing those supplements with your hormone specialist. During the first half of the menstrual cycle, before ovulation, progesterone levels are relatively low, less than one nanogram per milliliter. After ovulation, progesterone spikes reaching 6 to 10 nanograms per milliliter considered optimal for supporting a potential pregnancy. But if pregnancy doesn't occur, those levels drop off again, starting off the next cycle. So the average progesterone level in a healthy childbearing age woman comes in somewhere between 6 and 10 nanograms per milliliter. For postmenopausal women, we aim for a just right level somewhere near 10 nanograms per milliliter. The range is associated with better sleep, less anxiety, more stable moods, among other things. Hitting that 10 mark might be also tricky for some women. When your progesterone gets up to that optimal level, you might experience daytime drowsiness or nausea or constipation. This is something I see fairly often. It can make it difficult to stick with progesterone, uh, but moving your bedtime progesterone dose a little earlier in the evening, that can help progesterone sort of wear off by morning, reducing daytime grogginess. Testosterone is essential for energy, muscle strength, mood, and libido for women. And just like with estradiol and progesterone, there's a just right range that we're aiming for. Women in their 20s and 30s, prime childbearing years, have a healthy range for free testosterone between 1.5 and 4.2 picograms per milliliter. That's what we see on this graph. So for postmenopausal women, I recommend a target range of about the same 0.5 to 4.2. This range is enough to help maintain muscle tone, boost energy, support a healthy libido. Hitting this range can make a huge difference in how women feel physically and emotionally. 
It's not just about avoiding low energy or fatigue, it's also about optimizing your overall vitality. But just like with the other hormones, finding that just right testosterone level can be a little bit tricky. Too much testosterone can lead to unwanted side effects, irritability, acne, facial hair growth. That's why it's so important to have your free testosterone levels monitored closely by a hormone specialist who understands free testosterone and the nuances of dosing testosterone for women. So when it comes to testosterone, the goal is to get it into a range that restores your energy, your strength, your libido without tipping over into side effects. Having the right guidance is the key. Well, you can probably see a pattern in how I'm describing menopause by the numbers. It's important that you work with a trained, experienced hormone optimization specialist who can help guide you through these optimal hormone ranges. Your OBGYN, primary care provider, or family practice doc might understand those just right levels and how to get you to those, but it's not unusual for those providers to lack the experience and knowledge to know what to do with testing and maintaining those optimal levels. It's not their fault, they just haven't had the training. If you'd like to find a specialist near you, visit my website at simplehormones.com slash referral. I'll see if I can connect you with somebody who really understands the nuances of hormone optimization for women. Okay, now let's put it all together and look at the specific lab values that I consider optimal for these three hormones. Not only me, but other organizations do as well. Keep in mind, these numbers might vary a little depending on the specific lab that your doctor orders them from, but they're a good starting point. For estradiol, we're shooting for about 100 picograms per milliliter. We'd be happy with 60. For progesterone, the target is 10 nanograms per milliliter. For free testosterone, we want to get it somewhere in the upper range of 0.5 to 4.2 picograms per milliliter. These just right levels can help reduce the common symptoms of menopause like hot flashes and night sweats, fatigue, low libido, insomnia, while also protecting your long-term health your bone health, your brain health. Remember, getting your hormone levels optimized isn't about hitting a single magic number. It's also not only about the numbers. It's about the whole person, your symptoms, the way you're feeling. That's why it's so important to work with a trained hormone optimization specialist who can help fine tune your treatment plan. They'll look at your lab results, monitor your symptoms, adjust things as needed to keep you feeling your best. And if you're not convinced that hormones are right for you just yet, or if you're looking for more guidance on hormone therapy, I'd love for you to check out my digital course, The Menopause Solution. The course is designed to help women just like you gain the clarity and confidence to make your own hormone therapy decision. You'll learn everything you need to know about hormones, about testing and treatment options, so that you can feel empowered to take control of your own hormone health. Visit my website at simplehormones.com slash decision to learn more about making your HRT decision. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on hormone optimization. If you found this video helpful, feel free to share it with somebody who might be struggling with their own hormones. I'm Steve Goldring, the Hormone Pharmacist, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.